everyone, and welcome to the Center of Math Holiday Special. So let's say that you and four other of your friends say that you and four of your friends want to set up a secret Santa exchange or a anonymous holiday gift exchange where everybody has a present that they give to somebody else. In, um, everybody gives their present to somebody else and everybody uh, gets a present from somebody else in hopefully as random an order as possible because it, so that you don't know who you're getting it from until they give it to you because it's secret. Uh, so in order to do this, uh, what, you, what you most likely might think to do is to set it up randomly by throwing everybody's names into a hat and then having everybody secretly draw a name out of that hat. But uh, pretty often somebody is going to draw their own name and they can't give them the, their own gift to themselves so everybody has to restart all over again. So you might wonder, what, is the, um, what, what might be the mathematics behind how often it happens that somebody is going to draw their own name in this process, and can you figure out the probability that's going to happen? Uh, it turns out we can. So if we consider the, um, if we consider the function that uh, uh, points from each person in the group to uh, the person they're giving their gift to, uh, under, under the Secret Santa exchange as a permutation uh, where everybody has, everybody has, say, a number. One, two, three, four, five. This uh, setup I've, I've shown so far would be the permutation which sends one to three, three to one, and which sends uh, two to four to five to two in a cycle. Uh, so the permuta uh, 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 permutations can have fixed points, uh, and those are the ones that we don't want. Uh, what, what we want for a for this exchange to go uh, correctly is for the permutation to not have any fixed points. Such a permutation is called a derangement. Um, and uh, while the number of all sorts of permutations, as you may already know, is given by n factorial, that's all permutations. Uh, what we want to find is the number of derangements of n elements, uh, which is going to be a bit, a bit more harder to calculate than n factorial. We'll call this number d of n. And uh, the relevant number in this case would be d of 5, since there are 5 people. But we can actually calculate this for any number n, um, and it's not really too tricky to do so. Let's erase this diagram. So how do we start calculating it? First, we consider um, a situation where you have n people or n elements that are being permuted. In, say, a circle of n people. We've got one person labeled 1. Under a derangement, uh, that person will send their present or be mapped to under the permutation to some person uh, whose number is i. Uh, make it k, actually. Person number k. Now, there are, will be n minus 1 possibilities for what k is because uh, that person can be mapped to any uh, other person in the group except themselves. So. Our combinatorial first multiplier is n minus 1. Now that we have this person k, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that person k sends their present or gets mapped to back to person 1. And so we're calculating d of n. Here, um, everybody else in the group is going to look, uh, their behavior is going to have to look, look like a derangement of size n minus 2. So, uh, under the case where person k sends their present back to person 1, there are a further uh, d of n minus 2 possibilities. 
But we're not done. Another possible case is the other possible case, rather, is that person K sends their present somewhere else. Now, if we look at this diagram and we draw a box around person 1 and person K, then one gift is going to go into this box and one gift will come out. Or rather, uh, in the mathematical sense, one element gets mapped into this box and one element gets mapped out of this box uh, by the permutation. Someone over here is sending their gift to person 1. Uh, in this sense, person 1 and person K can be identified um, into a single person 1. Um, and this results in uh, the state of affairs looking like a derangement of n minus 1 elements, where all the elements uh, past uh, person number K, or all the people past person number K, have their numbers shifted down by 1 to compensate for the, the collapse of the two people. So, uh, in the case where person K doesn't send their gift back to person number 1, or isn't mapped back to person number 1, there are a further uh, d of n minus 1 elements, and that's all the possible uh, configurations. So we have that d of n is equal to n minus 1 times d of n minus 2 plus d of n minus 1. Uh, but we, can, we, can do, we can do better than this by uh, doing some fancy algebra. So if we look at this equation and we subtract d uh, and we subtract n minus 1 times d of n, mi n minus 1 from both sides. On, this, on, the, on the first side we get d of n minus n d of n minus 1 is equal to, uh, uh, if we use the distributive property, this is going to equal to be equal to n minus 1 times d of n minus 1, but we're subtracting n times d of n minus 1, so we get minus 1 times d of n minus 1 plus n minus 1 d of n minus 2, which is in turn going to be equal to minus 1 times the quantity d of n minus 1 minus n minus 1 d of n minus 2. So these two quantities look similar. This is, this is, this is the function uh, which sends n to d of n minus n d of n minus 1. If we apply this in function instead to n minus 1, we get the quantity d of n minus 1 minus n minus 1, parentheses here, sorry, times d of n minus 1 minus 1, which is d of n minus 2. So this, this quantity and the quantity that's being multiplied by minus 1 are the same, are, are the same function except applied to n and n minus 1. So this gives a, uh, rather than a, uh, look back of two recursion it gives it a look back of one recursion uh, and each successive recursion is just multiplying by negative one. So if, if we look at what is d of one, rather d of one minus one times d one times d of zero, there's no ways to make a derangement on a set of one elements because any function on that set of one element back to itself, a permutation, has to send a single element to itself and this can't be a derangement. So this is going to equal to zero minus, uh, however, the null function on the empty set is a derangement. It doesn't send anything back to itself because it doesn't send anything anywhere. So there's one derangement on the set of zero elements and thus d of one times one time, uh, minus one times d of zero is going to be equal to negative one. Uh, and then successfully, uh, so th then successfully we get, uh, we get that d of two minus two d of one is going to be equal to negative one times this. And then d of three uh, minus uh, three d of two is going to be equal to negative one times that. Uh, and so on and so forth. And we get that, uh, let's erase this diagram and use some more space d of n minus n d of n minus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the nth power. Uh, and we can continue from this. So if we look at this and we divide everything by n factorial, we get that d of n 
n over n factorial minus d of n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial is equal to negative 1 to the n over n factorial. Notice how I've made this quantity and this quantity look a lot, look more uh, similar in, in, in that they're both functions of the, they're both function the same function on, on different arguments n and n minus one. Uh, so what we can do with this is we can make this into what's called a telescoping series or a finite telescoping series. So if we add up uh, this quantity where the, where the argument n is successively one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to n, then each successive uh, minus d of n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial is going to cancel with the plus d of n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial in the next term down. So all that remains is going to be d of n over n factorial minus d of 0 over 0 factorial. Uh, and we, and um, on the other side of the on the other side of the equal sign, that's going to be the sum from uh, k equals one to n of negative one to the k over k factorial. So we can write this out and say that d of n over n factorial minus d of zero over zero factorial is equal to the sum. over k factorial. Now, we already know that d of 0 is equal to 1, and 0 factorial is defined to be equal to 1, so this is equal to 1, which is conveniently equal to negative 1 to the 0 over 0 factorial, so we can make this k into a 0 uh, by adding uh, this, this here quantity 1 to both sides. Uh, and then we multiply by n factorial, Then we multiply by n factorial, and they get finally get that d of n is equal to n factorial times the sum from k equals zero to n of negative one to the k over k factorial. Now this sum, if you've done uh, calculus with infinite series, might look familiar to you. In fact, if we replace, if you replace the n at the top with an infinity. This becomes the summation for e to the minus 1, where uh, e to the x is given by k, sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. So this sum uh, is very similar to the sum for e to the minus 1. Uh, in fact, if, and so uh, it, 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 it's the, that sum multiplied by n factorial. So if we subtract n factorial times e to the minus 1 uh, from this equation, or from, from d of n, we get d of n minus n factorial over e equals uh, n factorial times the sum from k equals n plus 1, since the first n terms, of the n terms from the infinite sum cancel out uh, to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k factorial. Now this is going to equal, um, since we're starting at n, fa n, n plus 1 factorial, th that will be equal to n plus 1 times n factorial. And n, n plus 2 factorial is n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n factorial. Uh, so the n, the n factorial that's being multiplied will cancel out with the n factorial part of all the denominators in this infinite sum. So what, what we get is negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times the infinite sum 1 minus 1 over n plus 2 plus 1 over n plus 2 n plus 3 uh, minus dot dot dot. And um, this quantity uh, if n is greater than zero, is going it, the, the negative one to the n plus one over uh, n plus one is going to have magnitude less than one half as long as n is greater than zero, and this whole bit will always have magnitude less than one half, um, uh, since you're going down from one a bit, then going up an even smaller bit, and just 
um, staying be staying between zero and one. Uh, and what results from that is that the discrepancy between d of n and n factorial over e, as long as n is greater than zero, will always be less than one half. So a very interesting occurrence is that d of n is the rounding of n factorial over e to the nearest integer, where the mix of the ceiling and floor um, brackets around n factorial over e uh, is, the, is the round to the nearest integer function. So if we go back to our story uh, with, with the secret Santa setup, there are n factorial total total permutations and uh, n factorial over e round that many derangements. So if we pick one of those permutations at random, the probability that it'll be, that it'll be a derangement and therefore that uh, everyone gets to send their gift to somebody else and you don't have to start the whole, you, you don't have to redraw everyone's names all over again, is going to approach one over e. Uh, and it does this very quickly uh, as the number of people increase because the uh, sum ends in um, e to the negative one uh, decrease in size very rapidly because their denominators are factorials. So um, we, we can actually, if we want to, we can calculate the, um, the number of derangements for five people like we started with uh, directly. So that's going to be the d of five equals five factorial times, um, that's going to be uh, one minus one plus one half minus one sixth plus one over 24 minus one over 120 where we went up from zero factorial in the denominator to five factorial in the denominator multiplying by negative one each time. And so five factorial is 120, so this cancels, and then we get plus 60 minus 120 over six is 20, plus 120 over 24 is five, minus 120, 120 over 120 is one. This, this is equal 44, and therefore the probability that uh, nobody will draw uh, their own name but you're uh, drawing a permutation of five people will be 44 over 120 is equal to 11 over 30. And this is already equal to 0 0.3666, if I remember correctly, which is already very close to um, 1 over e. which is about 0 0.3678, if again I remember correctly. And there you have it. That's how likely you are that you'll be able to set up a secret Santa uh, without having to draw everyone's names again. <laughs>